Hello everyone, this is WorksDB71 back at you for a, another non-vinyl community related video. So I'm not going to talk about vinyl or record or music, um, but something very closely associated with it, I think. Um, again, this is a follow-up video for mini comics. Um, the personal video that I sent to Nick that went public uh, because there were a lot of requests um, I've been getting feedback, uh, Blake tell me more about mini comics. Uh, where do they come from? Where can I find them? Um, so I'm going to just try to do a one take, not very well prepared um, shot at this. Uh, just to try to give you an overview. Again, if you want more information, just let me know and uh, I'll try to do a more detailed um, sections about mini comics and, and my and my uh, collecting of them and, and what I've learned so far so mini comics um, kinda came out of a, a couple of different paths that that joined uh, some people would say uh, that mini comics is an offshoot of zines and fanzines that came out of uh, 30s 40s 50s 60s uh, when people were were communicating with each other about uh, science fiction uh, writings and also comic uh, fanzines and people started putting their own little images and pictures and, and maybe some cartoons and things like that so there's one path uh, another path is the one that I'm going to talk most about because I think this uh, has a more direct line to the the group of people that I have been collecting which is the the born out of the underground comics path. Um, so when I first started uh, learning about mini comics five, six years ago, uh, as as you well know, if you followed any of my videos, I like to to dig up books and things to try to learn what I can. And so learning that uh, mini comics, uh, at least uh, the 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 ones that I have expressed my most of my interest in. Uh, came out of the underground scene uh, I started learning about underground comics I mean I, I knew a little bit about them but I didn't know the, any of the details so I found this great book called Rebel Visions um, by Rosencrantz uh, published by the one and only Fanographics books uh, fantastic uh, uh, overview of of what the underground comic scene was um, it says here 1963 to 75 um, but most of us think of it as the very late 80s early 70s period when you had lots of Robert Crumb um, work uh, you know uh, all of the uh, the the poster painters um, zap comics uh, things of that nature. Um, there's some Quicksilver Messenger Service posters, Robert Crumb's Cheap Thrills cover for um, Big Brother and the Holding Company. I'm trying to find the cover of Zap. You know, this is this is what a lot of people think of Zap Comics, uh, the Fabulous Fury, Freak Brothers, um, etc., etc. So. As with most uh, businesses, um, shelf space is is always at a premium, and getting landing your gig uh, uh, was something that you tried to keep hold of. And once you got into one of these published um, mainstays, you didn't want to give up your spot. And so, a lot of people wanted into the. Um, wanted into the scene but there was only room for a, a certain number of them and so people with the real passion for wanting to create their own comics and express their own thoughts well they did it anyway they self-published um, one of the things that that helped bring this about was the Xerox machine um, started becoming more ubiquitous although nowhere near the the way it is today uh, in the in the early 70s and there are also some folks that that really did you know true 
printing uh, with real printers um, of the comics. And I'll show you some examples. I, I've got I've got a stack of of pieces that I want to show. But um, underground comics. Uh, one of the stories that that uh, that people talk about. Gary Arlington, you see a picture of him there, um, San Francisco Comic Book Company. Uh, that photo was done in, in 72, actually. Um, he is, is often credited as uh, allowing or starting to allow folks to bring in some of their own published uh, mini comics and have them sell them. And so you would have, you, you have this period that... that uh, many comic collectors call we call the seven cent era simply because <laughs> they were priced seven cents. Um, kind of a story behind that price, but that's for another time. Um, this is a a, uh, a a piece I think is uh, Rip, yeah, R I P P. Um, it's the creator there, Rip, in uh, 1972 May. Uh, so these started showing up on on the shelves, and some of them sold, some of them didn't, and, and I guess people started seeing these and saying, "Well, I can do that. I can do something like that myself." And the, and sure enough, a a a an industry. I wouldn't call it an industry, but a movement started with the seven centers. Um, I don't have many seven centers. They are very hard to come by. Um, so if you do see some, pick them up. Uh, Underground Cartooning Course. Now this is a Justin Green uh, piece. Um, Justin was was a fairly prolific during this period, and and he uh, put together a mini comic uh, or a zine um, about what to do, how to make your own comics, and uh, nice little. Eight eight pager seven cents. Um, again, I think this was in seventy two. Might have been seventy three, but I'm gonna guess nineteen seventy two time frame. And one more early one that I have, I'll just show you Sally Star by Trina. Um, uh, she she uh, might have actually done some uh, some other comics works. Um, the name sounds familiar, but I can't I can't picture where where else she she is. Ten cents. Um, I don't think the price has gone up. She has twelve pages in this one instead of just eight. So, uh, hence the price there. So, all right. So you have you have people wanting to do their own uh, comics and they're self publishing. They make mini comics. Uh, I've shown you once before. I'll grab this back out. What they did. Let's take, they took a letter sized piece of paper, folded it. You fold it once and you get what's called a digest size. You fold it twice and you get what we call a quarter size. Uh, quarter size, which is a mini comic size. And, that, and that's, what, that's what people generally did. They made them this size. Um, now, move uh, through the 70s. Uh, to the late 70s, you start getting a change in, I guess, there's uh, comics became more political, more sarcastic, more more dry humor, more intellectual humor. Um, some started becoming more uh, more serial like, um, and and I think this was a reflection, kind of like the way music went. You know, we went. We had punk starting, and then later in the 70s and early 80s, you got punk like head on, and so there was this new era, and and I'm going to segue into this book that that folks called the new wave, uh, the the new the new wave of mini comics, um, the underground mini comics of the 1980s. Now, I'll start talking about this book, Michael Dowers. And Fantagraphic Books. Oh no, you see it. Fantagraphics. Yes. Released this in early 2010. Michael Dowers uh, was a part of this scene uh, of mini comics swapping and trading. Uh, even had his own, started his own company. Uh, Star. 
Starhead, Starhead Comics, um, with a few other folks. Uh, there's Michael, and um, so he was very, he was very aware of what's what's happening after he he learned about it and, and got hooked into the the network. Um, he uh, published this book, um, kind of to capture what was going on during the time. Uh, uh, an excellent, excellent book. Uh, at nearly at just under 900 pages, uh, 888 or something silly like that. Um, fantastic introduction, and I say introduction because there was a lot more, and he even admits it in here. There's so much that he had to leave out, and uh, but he captured the, the kind of the surface of, of what was going on. More to come later. Uh, so what I want to do is, you know, I don't want to. Flip, well, I do. I would love to flip through all of these things, uh, but I just want to give you a sense for, you know, the kind of stuff that was going on. And I want to point out some of the the the, the names um, that uh, that you probably should be familiar with if you have any interest in this at all. Now I'm going to start with Clay Garrity's. I mentioned him before. He was the guy that had an informational zine uh, called Comics World, later to be renamed Comics Wave, uh, that basically was the paper net, the internet uh, via the slow mail, snail mail system, that kind of kept this network of creators learning about each other, they would trade with each other, and he also published... Um, Mini comics under his own uh, titles. Um, his his publish publishing company was called Comics World, and he had a bunch of cool titles um, that that people could submit to. More about that later. Anyway, there's a couple of good good articles in here um, about Clay and and some some other pictures. Uh, so I'll show you another picture of, of Clay. He was primarily a a photographer, reporter uh, himself. Um, so he kind of helped uh, keep some of the network alive. Uh, other players uh, of the period. Um, Voitko, Bob Voitko um, of... Uh, Ohio, I think he's in the Cleveland area, maybe. Um, still doing a little bit of work today. Uh, let's see. We'll go with one of the uh, one of the, if there were superstars, uh, and and there there were, uh, you know, people people remember some of these names. Steve Willis. Uh, several, well, several, many have told me that if if there had been uh, someone. Who could have really made the money? Uh, Steve Willis could have done it. Uh, he his his approach to comic creation is very very intellectual, very surreal, uh, very funny. Uh, he was very quite prolific. Um, he loved political stuff. Uh, Odd, odd things. I mean, to to look at how some of his comics morph from one thing to another is fantastic. He's known, uh, prime well, not primarily, but one of his famous creations, probably the most famous of his creations, is Morty the Dog. Um, still, still doing some work today. Uh, it's got a fantastic blog site you can check out. Um, let's see, J.R. Williams. Um, did did some work during this period. Uh, you may you may be familiar with some of his more more mainstream stuff. J.R. Williams. Um, again, just quickly pointing out names. Bob X um, out of Nashville, Tennessee, I believe. I believe it's Nashville. Very very uh, good graphic artist. Um, his his ideas, his his designs. Though simple, um, very very effective um, in how they are how they come across uh, on the page. Let's see. 
It, w it wasn't always me and Mary Fleener, um, an artist uh, still producing today, uh, great artwork. Even even during the mini comics era, he she had a very um, recognizable design aspect. Um, actually, when I look at this now, I I think of uh, I can think of some other people that are doing work today that that very similar to to what she's done. Um, one more uh, that I'll just point out out of this book, and then we'll go on to somebody else. Jeff Gaither. Gaither, Gaither. Uh, he has a, a another very recognizable style. Blood clot number one. Oh, with Bob X here. Bob X, I just showed you, and Jeff Gaither. He, uh, I think he. I believe the story is right. He was uh, uh, Christian, but. Uh, Kind of uh, allowed or given permission by Mr. Big Daddy Roth himself to to do Rat Fink work because um, he could do it so well and was able to capture to me exactly what Big Daddy Roth was was uh, was doing with with Rat Fink. So I won't dwell on this much longer. New Wave. Uh, the Underground Comics of the 1980s. Um, there's your Zeno and uh, Bob X artwork on the on the cover there. Um, so, Michael Dowers did this in 2010. Got lots of feedback. This was pretty pretty successful apparently because uh, just three months ago, pow! Treasury of Mini Comics, Volume One. That means others are coming. I hope. Um, I, 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 I have been told, I, I have learned that Volume 2 is, is in the works right now. Again, another, um, very, very, very thick book of mini comics. Now, when I first, when I first learned about this coming out, I thought it was going to pick up where the new wave left off. I thought, okay, we'll go into the 90s and get a book on 90s. What Michael has done with this one, uh, oh yeah, again, Michael Dowers. And again, Fanta Graphics books, you see there at my finger. Uh, what he's done is he picked up some of the some of the artists that, that got left out of, uh, I, I say left out, he didn't leave them out, but um, he uh, included them in, in this book, uh, even though they did work in the 70s. Oh, here's another picture of uh, Gary Arlington. Familiar stand there. And uh, in included them in this book. So you have, you have comics from 70s, early 70s, 72, all the way up to 2009 or 10, I think is the last one that he included here. So another, another survey of, of mini comics examples now um, one of the common aspects of, of these two books and I suspect the next one as well is is he's republishing uh, comics that are in the mini comic size as you can see it's that size so uh, there were other size that were smaller and there were larger self-published things but he's just not covering that just because of the physical aspect other names and some of these names again um, personal favorites um, uh, people I've got to give a shout out to because uh, again and, and I'll say this soon these guys are still still at it um, you still get in touch with them Richard Krause uh, hello Richard um, RK uh, has been been doing mini comics for a while. Um, he's doing writing now, and I and I hope that he will publish some of his work soon. Uh, one of my favorites today, Matt Fiesel, uh has been doing comics since the late '70s, mini comics, and still still doing work today. Um, very very good stuff. And I, I've got some examples that I pulled out that I'll show you. Uh, another favorite, Colin Upton. Out of Vancouver, Canada, uh, very very pro prolific mini comics writer, and and again, uh, 
so so many people, but I just wanted to show that this recently came out. Go get it if you're interested in, in mini comics. Um, now, I said I had some examples. I want to show you just some of the things. Um, the reprints here are black and white. Not all of the mini comics were black and white. Some people went through, uh, this was uh, um, 1984 by uh, Tom Motley. Um, Ace of Brilling War um, in color. So color printed. Uh, let's see. This was this was a dollar. So this was quite expensive. Um, Through Black Holes published uh, Festival Comics um, on Greenstock. Uh, here's an early one. Um, I'll pull this one out so you can see it. Uh, a favorite just because of of the of the the color the ability um, 1979 uh, real dope thrills color cover um, insides black and white uh, but uh, cool right um, so Steve Willis I was telling you about um, his his famous dog Morty Morty the dog uh, again in color um, very nice I think this was also maybe eighty eighty one time frame not exactly sure um, Bob X um, dreams carved in rock nineteen eighty four I don't have a, a name on this one but Grant Green. Uh, Superb artist. Uh, I think he could have walked into Marvel and and draft and, and and did work on any book that they had. Um, Lump Soup, featuring Morty the dog and Happy Happy the Clown and Happy Clown, not Happy the Clown. Let me show you in case uh, in case you like like to hear me name drop. Chester Brown at my pinky. So it's a collaboration between Steve Willis and Chester Brown. Lump Soup. Uh, let's see. The date is uh, 1990. Monsters from Japan. One of my favorites. It has a spread in here that uh, I absolutely love. I, I, I look at this all the time um, wow the detail and people are self-publishing these things this was 1984 as well uh, come on focus we gotta see some names here Mike Roden and Bob X there you go one of one of my favorite minis that I have, um, for uh, <laughs> oh shoot, uh, crack, comic crack, Scott McCloud, Birth of a Nation, nineteen eighty nine. So Mister McCloud, Mister McCloud was doing mini comics. In fact, um, I heard a story by Matt from Matt Fizel that uh, he did some trading with a guy named Scott McLeod. I don't know how it was pronounced. I mean, I don't know how it was spelled, but it was pronounced McLeod. And he believes, and I I have to believe because <laughs> I don't think Matt would, would tell a lie, um, that Scott McLeod is Scott McLeod. So I don't have, I don't think I have anything with the Scott McLeod name, but I've got some Scott McLeod. Fun with phonics. Um, oh, comics, you, you heard me talk about um, Clay Garrity's, his comics world uh, name, pub publishing company, One Nuke Can Ruin Your Day, Par Holman, oh man, gotta take these out of the, out of the sleeve here, and get the name there. Just 
wanted to show you. 1987. This is a cool one. Jim Sergey. Um, who else, I, I also think is in the uh, in Ohio. Great, great artist. Still doing work today. Um, Pete the Pit Bull Puppy. Uh, last video, or the, the first video that I did uh, about Bob Foster. This is one of his publications at Jabberwocky Graphics. Um, Bob, excuse me, Brad. Brad Foster. Stuff. He had a series called Stuff. Um, went through at least um, a dozen different issues, maybe maybe up to twenty. I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I know I have a lot of them. Uh, stuff number seven, and I think you can still get some of these from Brad uh, directly from him. This is from 1987, just to give you an idea. Um, very very nicely done uh, fancy cover there one of my favorites I can't do this video without uh, mentioning <laughs> probably my favorite mini comic of the 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 new wave era um, this is uh, signed by Mondo M uh, aka Andy Nukes, aka Del Lee Covert, I believe is how you say his name. Uh, several different names, but his style I just absolutely love. Um, he doesn't often do a serialized story, but this was one of the few times that that he did. Um, I just I just don't know what it is about about his work. I can stare at it time and time again. I've I've told him, um, there's Mondo M, uh, come on, camera, and back up, Dale Lee Covert, 1985, first printing, 75 copies, um, he, he has such a simple style, not pretentious at all, but just the way that he uses a thick line, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Again, I can stare at, stare at his stuff all the time. Still doing work. Uh, in fact, another thing that I want to point out. Um, I got this in the mail from my friend Andy Nukes. Christmas greetings, where we see lots of Santas. Oh, excuse me. Santa dog, and I wanted to show this again to Comic Crack Terrence. We talked about we were talking about Ahmed Drake. Ahmed Drake as Santa was done in 2001. Again, uh, just received this this year. Folks are still doing it, and it's still great. Um, R.K. Richard. Richard and Bob Voitko. Midnight Fiction. Uh, oh, i got to say, Andy Nukes has uh, a blog. He's posting like everything that he has drawings of. Uh, Midnight Fiction is a website you can go to where uh, Richard Knight uh, was really heavy into... Uh, keeping information alive, uh, letting people know what was going on in the mini comics and zine world. Um, still updates it, not as heavily as before because he focuses attention on writing. Uh, but um, a player back in the day, he and Bob uh, collaborated on this bug infested comics. Uh, very nice piece here. Um, more name drop. Here's Peter Baggy. Testosterone City. Um, warning. Reading this could make you pregnant. <laughs> Great Peter Baggy style. Uh, cynical Man. Um, Matt Fiesel. Very famous for his stick figure drawings. Uh, cynical Man. I think this was... This had to be... Yeah, 1984. Um, 
a little bit later, uh, a little bit newer stuff. Send in the Albanians uh, cartoon book and stuff that he's still doing today. Um, tales of the digital conversion. He still does Cynical Man comics. Probably, well, I think he has it. He has a weekly Cynical Man cartoon that he does in the paper in Hamtramck, uh, Michigan. Um, I want to say that these have been coming out maybe three or four times a year, his Cynical Man mini comics. He just published a book, a second volume of his Cynical Man comics. Uh, I think it's just really collecting all of his cartoons that he's d been doing uh, in the newspapers. So again, you can still get this. Uh, people, people are still doing it. My friend, Dan W. Taylor, uh, was a new waiver and still isn't now an old waiver. <laughs> Time Warp Comics. Uh, he had been publishing this pretty regularly for a few years, but has taken a step away. Um, would uh, love to see some some of his stuff come back. Here's uh, Voitko uh, participating in here. Uh, uh, wrote, got some Roden work in here. Valentino, Jim. Um, some of you uh, comics guys may know that name, Valentino. Uh, last but not least, um, Colin Upton from Vancouver is still producing mini comics like a like a monster. Two Fisted Tales of Tea. Um, he did come to the space uh, convention, a small publishing mini comics kind of convention that's held in Cleveland every year. Uh, we got him to come down one year, and 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 <laughs> he had such a hard time finding good tea uh, where we were, Cleveland. Sorry, Columbus, in Columbus, um, Ohio. Uh, that that I guess it spurred the idea to uh, to start a new title, Tal Two Fisted Tales of Tea, where he talks about his his problems finding good tea. He does postmodern mini comics, uh, self-indulgent comics. He's got so many titles. Uh, very, very, very talented uh, artist and storyteller. He, his, his styles or his, 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 um, what he chooses to draw with or paint with or cartoon with changes from time to time because he likes to experiment. Um, he does very well with all of them, as far as I'm concerned. Again. I just wanted to point out a favorite that has been doing it for years and is still doing it. I think this was dated. Uh, I can tell you. Oh, he didn't put a date on this. Oh, yeah, he did. 12. 2012. Um, whoop, come back. So, that is my, my stack that I wanted to show you. My brief introduction. Uh, sorry, it's 30 minutes uh, already. But really, if you're interested, uh, pick up these books from Fanagraphics. Um, go to your local comic book shop. Request them to order them. Um, I'm sure they will happily do it for you. Uh, great interviews, great examples of mini comics. And um, if you want more information, you want me to say more, just tell me. And... Uh, as you can tell, I, I've tried to cram so much into this video, but I'm very passionate about about these mini comics. This is this is where my heart has been for a long time because it's a fascinating world, and uh, the fact that some of these these comics are still around baffle me. Uh, and the production, you know, you heard me say two three hundred copies sometimes there are only twenty copies sometimes fifty um, are they rare yes they're rare are they valuable not really valuable but to me they're priceless so again let me sign off before we hit thirty five minutes my one of my longest videos ever sorry about that thanks for staying if you're still here and do comment uh, I would love to to carry on further with this so Without further ado, let me hit the stop button. Happy New Year, everyone, and hope you've all had a great holiday season. Bye-bye.